Um, so we're going to talk about sustainability in digitalization. Um, so, you know, I think uh, a few years ago, a lot of people were like, right, well, I'm, I'm going to put all of my data centers into a green data center. I'm, I'm done now, right? I'm sustainably dig digital wise. Uh, probably not enough, really. And given that the, there's a lot of focus around the world now on global climate change and, and associated sustainability, it feels like we probably need to do a little bit more in the digital world. Um, but, but that can have some positives and some negatives. So how, how do we balance sustainability in, in a new digital era? That's our question. Um, Azita, I'm going to come to you first. And what do you feel are the positives and the negatives here? And how can we balance those? Thank you, David. Um, so uh, the sustainability and digitization have been two mega trends uh, that have been hyped up in the last uh, decade. However, the flavor of the hype and, and the drivers have been very different. Digitization has been focused on technology innovation, digital economy, uh, while the sustainability has been from moral perspective or regulatory uh, aspect. Um, and I believe that there's an opportunity lost because uh, to really drive innovation, having that inclusivity of uh, business nature and uh, society uh, when uh, driving digitalization is very important. Uh, the uh, digitalization so far, unfortunately, as you mentioned, hasn't really uh, impacted sustainability positively. Um, even move to the cloud, um, if the data center or the, the cloud provider is not using green energy, and because of the sheer uh, growth of use of a uh, usage of a cloud, the carbon footprint will be very high. Um, and also, if you look at device manufacturers, it's the same. Um, the business model is around uh, building new uh, and uh, the uh, footprint for um, recycling and reusage of old pieces is very small. So, uh, and as you see, th these topics are, both topics are very complex, layered, uh, but for the benefit of the audience and uh, uh, this session, I think there are opportunities for technology leaders um, to actually uh, impact uh, their organizations and drive uh, um, innovation and economic, uh, su sustainable economic growth um, through um, their work in, in digitalization. Uh, one is, we talked about cloud uh, briefly, so all three major providers at the moment are public cloud, uh, Google, uh, Microsoft and Amazon are moving their major data centers uh, to zero carbon. So even though the uh, energy consumption is very high. The level of efficiency that they provide comparing to on-premise uh, cloud and so on is uh, much higher, uh, as well as there's a carbon footprint is very small because they uh, start using uh, green energy. Um, second is around devices. And um, again, um, as a technology leader, there's an opportunity to drive, bring your own device and um, reusage of devices rather than uh, promoting a new uh, parts more and more. Um, third is around suppliers. Really majority of application products that is used in, in technology, you have suppliers uh, that you can impact through choosing the ones that are moving to green, use green energy or have um, the uh, sustainable approach to uh, product development. And last but not least uh, is product development in general. Um, so far we have been used to lean product development, which is really remove of waste. Uh, but the next generation product development can uh, is click. Uh, and it stands for uh, circular. So all parts of that product can be reused um, and uh, um, recycled. A lean, which again focuses on uh, efficiency. Uh, inclusive, it actually thinks about, think about nature, society, and economics rather than just economics. Uh, and last but not least is clean. So click. Uh, CL 
I see uh, is the next generation product development approach, uh, which will drive enormous amount of innovation in product development and uh, sustainable economic growth. That, that, there's some fabulous insights and in I, I hadn't heard of click I have to say I just wrote down wrote down that I, I can feel myself using that going forward I mean really interesting that you right at the top there called out the the moral and business aspect to it yeah and I think I think until we get a combination of those two together we, we won't see real investment and progress in this area um, you talked about footprints uh, we traditionally say carbon footprint but, but there's a lot of that kind of stuff um, Clive in, in the audience has said, are we also thinking about sustainability in terms of remote working and community footprints, for example? Um, and, and, you know, that's naturally something that's, that's at the forefront of our mind. But Maria, I wanted to come to you, 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 you know, um, uh, Azita and, and myself and some of the others have worked in large corporations that are now having to retrofit, you know, uh, a, a more sustainable world. But you, you work from the ground up with lots of organizations, new businesses and stuff like that. How are they tackling sustainability? Are they getting in on day one on that? Yeah, I mean, this is something that is a great question because getting in on day one is just, that's where you can shape it more, right? It's much harder to retrofit. And so we're taking that very seriously. And I have found, it's one thing, I recently moved from the US to Europe and founders here, I think are much more receptive and it's already top of mind, right? I think there are certain brands in the US, but I feel like founders here really care. We, for example, have um, an ESG program where as soon as we invest in a company and we invest very early. So this is like person and an idea and maybe like a drawing. There's like rarely anything built out beyond that. Um, we sit down with them and look at a whole framework, which we call this universe, you know, the universe of responsible actions. And we take a pretty wide view to ESG here, but we think about like basically go through what their company is, because it really depends on if it's a hardware company versus a software company. And exactly what they're doing, but we think through what are the actions they can take and how can they set it up from day one. And the categories that we look within that framework are around employees. So from a diversity and inclusion perspective, from a health and safety, people, policies, even remote work, that's where that would fall for us. We look at the environment, we look at community engagement, we look at governance, and we also look at responsible product design. So I think even data biases and things like that come out. And so we look at kind of the universe of what you could do and how you could design ESGN from day one. And then usually founders tend to pick a few things that are really important and given what, you know, what they want to offset um, or what they're trying to drive as a change. Um, but we find that having the conversations very, very early with founders um, and the senior teams to also help execute it changes it. It's almost like hiring for diverse teams. Like if you, if you wait until you're 100 people, good luck getting your ESG initiatives off the ground. And so we try and start them really early. But, you know, it is a, it is a more new topic that I think people have been interested in recently in the last year or two. Okay, that's great. Uh, uni universe of responsible actions. I'm getting some great little sayings here. This, I, I really like that one. I think one of the interesting areas there that, you know, you make a point about whether you're in the software world or the hardware world, and of course those two often cross together. You know, recently I've been more involved in the software world, so I'm thinking data centers, I'm thinking, you know, suppliers, as Azita was saying, and how do I work with those? But actually the hardware world, you know, I, I, I was at one time working in the mobile devices world and, you know, how they get manufactured, the components that are in them and all that kind of stuff. That That's yeah. all sustainable. And, and now I'm working less technical, but, you know, in the wine world, we have bottling and distribution and all those kind of things. And there's a, there's a role for it all to play there. So actually um, on that front, you know, we, we see a lot of that on the hardware side is like, how do you make the supply chain sustainable? Um, right. But then we're also seeing it as a category of its own to invest in, which I probably should also say is like, we're looking at companies that are trying to, you know, have an impact on society and trying to make it a, you know, a better world in that way. Like we just looked at a company called Clean Hub, which is essentially offsetting your plastic footprint, not your carbon footprint. Um, and so they work with brands that have direct to consumer brands and they offset it with a series of different recycling partners in, in different countries but they've gone really deep in actually creating they have a whole way to create non-recyclable materials into recyclable materials and so i think that there are it's a category even for investment right now separate from what each company is doing cool okay and the the click approach that i mentioned cs stands for circular and it means that every single piece that is used in a hardware everything from washing machine to to train um it can be recycled or reused again in another product uh, so that's the uh, uh, approach in in click that you don't do any waste you don't create any waste sure sure okay all right listen that was a good one thank you very much some some uh, some really interesting thoughts there i've certainly learned some stuff